Today we're going to look at a new topic called differentiation. We're going to look at it in the context of gradient. Now when we were working with straight lines, we were easily able to calculate the gradient of a line by using two points, popping them into the gradient formula. And that told us how steep the line was. The bigger the gradient, the steeper the line. If it was negative, we knew it was in the different direction. When we have a function that's not linear, it's slightly more difficult to describe the gradient. And that's because the gradient varies throughout the function. In this example that we've got here, you can see that the steepness at one point in the curve is very different to the steepness in another. In fact, here we've got one positive and one negative gradient that I can see straight away just by using these lines to illustrate. We can't therefore just work out a gradient for this function. But what we can do is we can work out an expression to calculate the gradient. Now this is just to give you a little bit of an idea of the context of what we're learning today. I don't want you to worry about this at the moment. When we're in class we'll discuss more proofs and why things are the way they are. The purpose for this lesson is to learn the basic rules of how to go from the function to the derivative. And the derivative we're going to be thinking of as an expression to calculate the gradient. The notation we're going to be using is function notation. So to describe the original function we'll have f of x equal to a bunch of terms that, that describe the function. Then when we look at the derivative we will be using f dashed x. That tells us that we've differentiated the function. So the very basic rules are this. We multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. For example, if I have a function which is x to the power of 6, the derivative would be we multiply by the power, which is 6, and we reduce the power by 1, 5. So our derivative, f dashed x, is equal to 6 times x to the power of 5. This also works when there are coefficients. So if the function is 6x to the power of 5, our derivative will be, well we multiply by the power, 5 times 6 is 30, and we reduce the power by 1, 30x to the power of 4. We sometimes will come across functions which have negative numbers. A function where it's equal to x to the negative 2 gives us a derivative. We multiply by the power, negative 2, and reduce the power by 1, negative 3. So our derivative in this case is negative 2 times x to the power of negative 3. Now you should remember from your indus rules that I can express that as a positive indus by popping it underneath the fraction. Negative 2x to the power of negative 3 is the same as negative 2 over x cubed. Now we will be using a lot of indus rules while we're doing differentiation. So if you have forgotten some of them, now would be a good time to go back and practice them. Remember there's a link in your team's notebook where you can do some indus practice. We can also have fractions in our function. So if f of x was equal to 3 quarters of x to the power of 5, our derivative would be, we'll multiply by 5, or well 5 times 3 quarters is 15 quarters, and reduce the power by 1, 15 quarters of x to the power of 4. We're now ready to complete our first note. So page 2 of your notes. And the first example, f of x 
is equal to x to the power of 4. So f dash x is equal to 4x cubed. We multiplied by the power, which is 4, and then we reduced the power by 1, which made it 3. The second example, f of x is equal to x to the power of negative 3. So when we differentiate, multiply by the power, so it's negative 3 times x to the power of, we're reducing by 1, negative 4. And the third example, f of x is equal to x to the power of negative one third. So for the derivative, or f dashed x, we multiply by the power, so negative one third times x to the power of, we reduce by one. One is three thirds, and I already have negative one thirds, so if I take away another three thirds, I'm going to have negative four thirds. Now this is starting to look a little bit untidy. So again, I'm going to use the indus rules to tidy this up slightly. These are the types that we'll focus on in class because these are the trickier ones at the end. The indus rules that we mentioned earlier, the fact that this is negative, means that I'm going to pop it underneath the fraction to make it positive. For fractional indices, remember, the number on the denominator represents the order of the root, and the numerator is the power. So I can restate this as negative 1 over 3 times the cube root of x to the power of 4. So the negative meant that I brought the x underneath the fraction, the 4 was the power, the 3 was the order of the root. In the fourth example, f of x is equal to x to the power of 3 over 2. So the derivative is going to be equal to Multiply by the power, so I've got 3 halves of x. 1 less than 3 halves, as 3 halves take away 2 halves, which gives me a half. So f dashed x is 3 halves of x to the power of a half. Again, I'm going to be using my indus rules here. To the power of a half is the same as the square root of. So I'm going to tidy that up by writing 3 root x over 2. Remember that 3 halves of square root of x is the same as 3 root x over 2. It just looks tidier if we write it this way and when we need to substitute numbers into x it's going to be a little bit easier for us if we've got it in this form. Okay, so can you pause the video here and complete these tasks in your daughter please? So answer the first two questions in sentences and then for question three, write the function and below it write the derivative, remembering to use f dashed x. You're now in a position to be able to answer quite a few of the questions in the first exercise. You can answer the following. Exercise 4D. Sorry, exercise 60, question 1 to question 10, and exercise 6f, question 1 to question 7. Okay, we'll focus on the trickier ones when we're in class together. 